Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone for the October 19, 2020 planning board hearing for the town of Brookhaven. I'd like to introduce the board. Well, before I do, uh, let me introduce the board. I have Mr. Pete Zarcone. Hello. Present. Present. Patricia Kelly. Say, say present. present. Mr. Steve Walutis. Here. Karen Dunn. Here. Richard Smith. Present. John Rose. Present. I'm Vincent Pascal. I'm present. We also have what is counsel to the planning board, Ms. Lee Ray, secretary to the planning board, Ms. Eileen McCallion, and commissioner mm -hmm. of the planning, environmental land management, Ms. Beth Riley. Uh, before we begin, Ms. McCallion, are there any items on the agenda that will not be heard this afternoon? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number eight, the Arboretum at Farmingdale would like to be held to an open date. And also item number 10, Tyler Avenue at Miller Place has requested to be adjourned until November 9th. Okay, on that number eight, you said to an, adjourn to an open date. I have it down, they're gonna to have to re-advertise, so. Yes. Okay, so we're not gonna pick an open date. Okay. They'll just have to come back and they'll advertise when they're ready to do that, okay? Okay. All right. With that, I'd like to start with item number one, Quorum Omega, Lot 27 at Quorum. Commissioner? It's a relief of covenant on the map of Quorum Omega, Lot 27, Campfire Lane in Quorum. The applicant requests an increase in clearing limit from 70% to 85%. Survey depicts current clearing at 80%. The parcel is approximately 20,000 square feet, not located within any critical environmental areas, and is currently zoned A1 residential. Based on previous approvals within the subdivision and the location of the property outside of all critical environmental areas, the Division of Environmental Protection agrees with the applicant to increase the existing clearing limits. The Division of Environmental Pr Protection recommends an allowance of an increase in clearing from 70% to 85%. All areas counted as natural shall not have sod and must be planted with natural stock. Submit covenants and final survey prior to filing and the staff comments are last dated 8-27-2020. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there anyone from the public uh, in the meeting with us on this council? Someone has, if someone is here to uh, speak on this application, they need to let me know um, in the chat function. So far, I only, no one has responded. No one's put in what applications they're here for. So just okay. give us a minute. All right, so there's no questions from the public. With that being said, does the board have any questions on item number one? If not, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion by Mr. Rose. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcone. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Mr. Dunn. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 7-0. Item number two, Old Stump Road, Land Division, Plot B at Brookhaven. A relief of covenant application on the map of Old Stump Road, Land Division, Lot B, 86 Old Stump Road. The applicant requests to increase clearing limits from 38% to 48%. Survey submitted depicts current clearing limits at 48%. The parcel is approximately 61,000 185 square feet. It's within the Pine Barrens Compatible Growth Area and Coastal Zone Area South Critical Environmental Area and the Carmen's River Conservation and Management Area and Fireplace Historic District and is currently zoned A Residence 1. Based on the community characteristics in the surrounding area, including all covenants and restrictions for adjacent subdivisions, current clearing limits for the property are more restrictive. Furthermore, for properties this size within the CGA, the maximum clearing limit is 50, sorry, 46%. The Division of Environmental Protection agrees with the applicant to increase the existing clearing limits and recommends uh, there are five of them. Allowance of a clearing limit increase from 38% to 48%. Revegetate areas in excess of 46%. All areas counted as natural shall not include sod and must be replanted with natural stock. Submit covenants and final survey prior to submitting uh, to the county. And the last revision date is 9-8-2020. Thank you, Commissioner. If anyone in the public is in this Zoom meeting for the Planning Board, please uh, state your name and the application for which you'd like to speak on in the chat room so we know that you want to speak on any of these individual applications. 
Councillor, is anyone in the chat room for this application? Uh, yes, Diane Moje is here for this application. Okay, can we bring her in? She's in. Yeah. Good afternoon, Ms. Moje. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Okay. What is it that you would... Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I um, am before you with the request for increase of clearing from 38% to 48%. I have the recommendations from staff suggesting that we can go to 46%. That would uh, make the owner have to revegetate approximately 1,224 square feet. We are agreeable to this. Um, I, if the board has any questions, we'd be happy to address it. All right, thank you, Ms. Moje. Any, does the board have any questions? No. All right, seeing none, they have a motion. That's Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Ms. Kelly. Mr. Second. Mr. Chairman, it's board member Pete Zarcon. I make a motion to second that motion. Okay, second by Mr. Zarcon. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. They should know. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, Ms. Moser. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Item number three Port Woods, lot number 18 at Port Jeff Station. Relief of covenant request is for a, re a request in clearing limit increase from 46% to 97%. The survey submitted depicts clearing at 77%. It's located out of outside of the New York State Pine Barrens, is located within the town's critical environmental area, Pine Barrens. Um, homes in the subdivision are located to the southwest and east, and a single family home exists to the north. The parcel is currently zoned uh, A1, is approximately 40,200 square feet. The property owner is seeking a lot line adjustment uh, mm -hmm. that would reduce the area of the subject site um, from 40,000 square feet to 31,000. 200. There are eight staff recommendations, uh, last dated 9-9-2020. The request for 97% is inconsistent with the clearing limits for the subdivision and for most properties subject to Pine Barrens clearing standards. The applicant is seeking to, to divide the property in a way that would remove the majority of the existing natural vegetation. Assuming that it is approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Division of Environmental Protection suggests a 58% clearing limit to remain with the subject parcel, which is described in staff condition number two, and not the portion that's going to be split off and added to the adjoining parcel. The 58% clearing limit is consistent with the previous approvals for this subdivision. So if you look at your staff recommendations, it's a little bit different here. I just want to go over it with you. This part here that I'm showing you where it says vacant, this is a part of this overall piece here. They're looking to move the lot line from here to here so that this will now be one parcel. So the clearing limit would be removed from this parcel and would remain in its entirety on this parcel. So we're not recommending a denial of 46% to 97%, but approving an increase in clearing limits on 46 to 58% on this parcel here, which is part of the parcel to the south. And then recommending that the parcel to the north no longer have a clearing limit. So that's here. They have to revegetate the areas cleared in excess of 58% on this parcel to the south, um, submit all covenants and surveys uh, prior to filing, and it will be subject to the Board of Appeals approval for that lot line modification. Thank you, Commissioner. Is the applicant present on this application? Yes. Yes. Okay, we bring whoever it is in. Are you bringing the applicant in, Councilor? Then she's oh, in. Yes. Okay, I'm in. Okay. Hi. Yes. Uh, that's Tracy's permit. Tracy Would, Rivera. Mm -hmm. uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay, state your name and address for the record. Sure, Tracy Rivera, office is located at Tracy's Permits, 80 Terry Street, Patchogue, New York, 11772. 
Um, good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone's safe and well um, and getting used to this, uh, I guess you can say this, these Zoom meetings. Uh, this is the first one I'm doing in planning. I've had quite a few before um, Zone Board. We're actually be back before the Zone Board this Wednesday for this application that's been on the holdover. Um, unfortunately, when we started to do the lot line modification, we really did not realize that there were any restrictions and covenants because they were not shown on any of the surveys. So the original application that went before the Board of Appeals was put on the holdover till things were um, cleared up um, with your department. I know the owner themselves um, had uh, correspondence uh, with the planning division and is in agreement. Um, this is the the, the um, agreement that they came up with. Um, it's, it's just basically changing the lot line and then re and um, they'll be filing restrictions and covenants and moving forward with that. If you take notice, the smaller lot, which is not shown on this survey, it's that smaller area right there, is actually probably the smallest um, parcel in the entire area, and it's like not even conforming. So actually, by approving this lot line modification really makes the parcels more even. It makes the entire area more conforming. So, um, you know, I'm, we're in favor of the application. We're obviously in favor of the recommendations since they were, um, you know, um, gone over before uh, today. So um, thank you. Okay, that area that was just you just noted that smaller area is that going to be contiguous? Is that going to be part and parcel to the area to the east? Yes. It so it'll make yep. So it'll make that small parcel that's really a hundred by a hundred. It'll now make it a hundred by I think one ninety. I think the property is ninety deep. So it is. Okay, I guess sir, a note. I mean, is there anyone else in the uh, chat room, counselor, that would like to speak? No. Okay. Does the board have any questions? Just one question, Mr. Chairman. This is Richard Smith. Uh, Hello. Why would there be no um, clearing limits on the newly created or expanded lot? Uh, because that lot never had any restrictions and, and clearing limitations. There was never anything imposed on it. It was only the larger lot. So when they came up with the when they came up with the new restrictions and covenants, they kept it the same way and just imposed it on the on the larger. Parcel. Me, the parcel that's losing it. But can. weren't they one lot before? You know, the bank. It was one no, lot they, before. They, they were never one lot. The smaller lot that's a hundred by a hundred that will be obtaining the, the larger, uh, the you know, the addition never had okay. restrictions or uh, covenants imposed on the parcel. The hours, right? So they're not imposing restrictions and covenants on the parcel, even though we're obtaining we're obtaining more property from it. My my question was to the commissioner. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Um, the, the, um, why why would there be no clearing limits on that lot, the expanded lot? Because the larger parcel is going to take all of the clearing limits. Okay, I see. So this parcel to the south will retain all of it. This parcel is wooded. And it's my understanding their intention is to keep it mostly that way as a buffer, but the southerly lot here, they're going to have everything. They're going to take everything from both lots. I, I understand. Think. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions by the board? Seeing, seeing none, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Mr. Smith. Second. Second, yeah. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcone. Vote aye. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Aludis. Aye. I vote aye. I got you. Uh, Mr. Rose. I vote aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Council, I know you put notes on for the chat room there. Is anybody responding to those uh, members uh, you're sending out? Slowly. Okay, let's go. To but if now. anyone is here to speak on an application, please let me know in the Q&A or in the chat function and let me know what uh, meeting you are here for and whether you're for the applicant or whether you are uh, here to speak from the public. Thank you. Item number four, Lorraine Woods, lot number six is Medford. The application before you is an increase in clearing limit from 36% to 59%. The survey submitted depicts clearing limits at 59%. The parcel is located outside of New York State Central Pine Barrens and is approximately 36,976 square feet in zone A residence one. The Division of Environmental Protection agrees uh, to increase the clearing limit and recommends a denial 
of the increase 36% to 59% and recommends an allowance of it being increased to 58%. Submit covenants and restrictions prior to filing with Suffolk County. Submitting a final survey prior to filing. Let me check, I just want to check one thing, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we changed them, I'm sorry. What I have on my paper. Okay, um, yeah, so we are allowing the increase to 58%, but we're not gonna have them revegetate that. We're gonna allow it to naturally um, revegetate for that extra 1%. So it's three, five staff recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner. Yep. Is the applicant present on this application? Yes, Mr. Malguiner is here. Okay, bring him in. I'm here. Good afternoon, please raise your right hand. You swear, okay. Okay, so we're in the mirror. <laughs> do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. All right. You want to talk on behalf of the application? We're okay with the uh, recommendations. You're, you're good with all five conditions? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone else in, on this application, Counselor? No, nope, there's no one else here. Does the board have any questions, Mr. Malganara? Seeing none, I have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place this matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Ms. Kelly. Mr. Chairman, this is Board Member Pete Zarcon. I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcon. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Bye bye. Item number five, Pine Woods at Quorum, lot 142 at Quorum. The relief of covenant before you recommend uh, requests an increase in clearing limit from 58% to 70%. The survey submitted depicts clearing to be 90%. Parcel is located outside of the New York State Pine Barrens, but is located within the town's designated Pine Barrens. It's, the property is located uh, adjacent to lots within the same subdivision and the Pine Ridge Golf Club. It's approximately 15,581 square feet and is currently zoned a residence farm. The Division of Environmental Protection has no objection to this application and the new clearing limit would meet town's current clearing standards for lots this size. So recommend an approval of a clearing limit increase from 58% to 70%. Allowance of the fence to remain within the buffer removal of the brick and loose stone area out of the buffer. Revegetate areas in excess of 70% and the 15 foot buffer. Submit a detailed revegetation plan, submit a survey and amending covenants prior to recording. And there's six staff conditions, last dated 9-10-2020. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone present for this application, Council? Uh, yes, I have Mr. Placido who's here. Okay, bring him in. And he's in, just waiting for him to. Hello? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. how are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Pasudo. Can you raise your right hand, please? Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay. You want to speak? This is your application? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we're just looking to possibly put in an in ground pool as well as clear out some of the vegetation we had and just want to do everything the right way and uh, follow in accordance with any uh, clearance level that could be increased. And I do understand once everything's done, I will may have to revegetate to meet the 70%, uh, but I have no problem with that. I just uh, asked the commission to do so and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on this application? I have no one else. Okay, questions by the board? None. May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to close this public hearing and place the item on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Mr. Rose. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Aludis. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item number six, Waiting River Estates, lot number 47. The relief requested is an increase in clearing limit from 52% to 85%. The applicant intends to install a pool and create space for children to play. The survey submitted depicts current clearing at 76%. The parcel is located within the Central Pine Barrens compatible growth area and is approximately 18,791 square feet and is zoned A residence one. 
the Division of Environmental Protection has no objection to an increase in clearing limits of the property based on the preservation of 36 acres of land within the subdivision and the precedence of granting multiple lots of increase in clearing limits. The DEP recommends 70% for this parcel, which is consistent with the expanding clearing limits for parcels of similar size within the subdivision and within the Pine Barrens. Furthermore, the survey shows that the property, uh, if the property be, were to be revegetated to 53%, there would still be room for the proposed pool. The 70% clearing limit would provide approximately 3,200 square feet of lawn space if the pool were installed as proposed. So the staff recommends a denial of clearing limit increase from 52% to 85%, approval of an increase to 70%, revegetate areas in excess of 70% and submit a revegetation plan, submit amended and covenants and final survey prior to recording. Thank you, Commissioner. Is the applicant present, Councilor? I don't have anyone here for this application. Okay, does the board have any questions on this application? No. Nope. Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Steve Walutis. I make a motion to close this public hearing and place it on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Mr. Walutis. Chairman, this is Board Member Pete Zarcone. I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcone. Ms. Kelly? I vote aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Rose? Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Moving on to miscellaneous matters the Tesla Science Center, Visitor Center at Shoreham. Property is located on the northeast corner of New York State Route 25A and Randall Road in Shoreham. Zone J business is approximately 16 and a half acres. The proposal is to do a change in use from a residence to a visitor center for the Tesla Museum and a facade change. This application was previously approved by this board on November 21st, 2016. The applicant proposes to use the change of use from a residence, which was stated on their 1976 CEU, as a visitor center for the Nikola Tesla former lab facade change to the building is proposed and has received HDAC approval. Submission of a parking lot plan uh, was a previous condition under the 2016 approval. And the application is also having a proposed monument sign. There are nine staff recommendations for approval, last dated 9-17-2020. Thank you, Commissioner. Is the applicant present? Yes, uh, it's Michael Russo. Okay, Mr. Russo, please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Russo, you want to talk on the application? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity, uh, everybody. <clears throat> so, um, as you guys know, we've been in, at this for a long time. We bought the property uh, in 2013. Uh, part of our strategic development, other than raising money, was the adaptive reuse of some buildings, the evaluation of some buildings, things like that. That led us to an application for a minor addition and restoration of the what is known as the Bauer House, which is this uh, building on its own on its own lot. That's part of the 16-acre uh, plus property. <clears throat> we had received approval uh, from this board um, several years ago, as Ms. Riley said, and uh, we've been in the process of doing a lot of things to make it happen, including. Um, uh, putting through the process of this former uh, Superfund site and going through the process with the prior owners, AGFA, with the, uh, all the steps that we need to go through for when we disturb soil. What that, uh, what that came through is that we have a, a, we had to go through, as the plans depict, uh, putting in a new sanitary system to replace the old and we are moments away from uh, getting that. What we ended up having to do, which took the longest, was ending, uh, going into a, a decree, a uh, consent decree with AGFA and the DEC. The DEC asked for it to be updated um, and update uh, the process for the SMP, really just about the, the process of when soil gets dug up for like a foundation, where is it going to go, uh, things like that. How does it get documented? So it took longer than we expected. During the last four years, the building has fell into further disrepair as well. And we've been doing things like putting tarps and doing other uh, things that we can do to make sure it doesn't get too much worse. But part of this is the 
um, where we thought two years would have been enough to get a permit um, are obviously our approvals from this board has, uh, re has lapsed. <clears throat> so our request today is to, re to renew, I guess, the, the approval that we've gotten before. Um, and I have two requests that as part of the conditions of the prior recommendations from HDAC um, that I'd like for reconsideration by this board. Okay, you want to state those questions? Sure. It's, it's actually two fairly simple things. Uh, one is the siding, and the second are the windows. Um, the siding has uh, is is saturated with lead paint, um, and it was the the hope that the HDA by the HDAC that we would make um, reasonable accommodations to try to reuse and keep intact the existing siding due to water damage over the last four plus and then 40 years prior, um, the, the, the siding is, is severely de deteriorated. We'd have to take the siding off to replace the substrate that is water damaged. And to be able to do that in a, in a, in a feasible way, both for the integrity of the thin siding, as well as um, costs that go along with it and mitigation, it is um, severe. The, uh, you know, part of that impact is that the budgets of 2016 and bids back then, you know, have considerably come up uh, in addition to all of all those means and methods. It's pretty detailed in, on the labor side. The other has to do with the windows. Same thing, a lot of windows have been broken uh, over the years and we can uh, still provide windows that look and feel similar to what is there. We're not looking to change the character of the proposed building. It's still um, going to look the same from the street and for the visitor standpoint. Um, I will also um, bring to everybody's attention since the board is slightly different than the last time we presented about this, is that the town board on, their, on our request and their unanimous support after we bought the property declared the property as a historic place on the town register, which then, which is what brought HGAC's review to the application. Prior to that, HGAC would not have had any uh, overview of, of our application. Um, the, uh, just for another correction of record, the prior use of the, of the building has a CFO as an office space. Um, um, we had gotten those records from the building department and we had um, submitted them um, you know, to staff, which I know Luke and Amy have them on record. Um, so thankfully it is a commercial use to a commercial use um, uh, to make this our visitor center. We're ready to execute contracts with contractors in the next two weeks. Um, so we can lock in our prices, uh, lock in our schedule and, uh, you know, look to have our groundbreaking as quickly as the building department would allow us. Um, and, um, you know, obviously endeavor to invite everybody to come and visit us once, once we're open. What is the, the existing siding that has to be replaced? What material is that? It's a thin cedar straight line shake, uh, shake and we would replace it in kind. With cedar shake? Mm -hmm, absolutely, and it'll be sealed and painted to look just like it's been there for the last uh, 70 plus years. Okay. Is the board I, have, any I have up the HDAC letter and I don't see what you're referencing. It's, it's referring to plans. So what you're saying is that the plans you submitted are what you want to change? The, um, there was an exhibit, an original exhibit that yeah. the original application came along with um, that referenced their recommendations. I don't think that the recommendations, final approval of HGAC recommends final approval design submitted. There was a reference document that that went on to the drawings. So it's a design submitted that you're referring to. It's not the HDAC letter. So the HDAC made recommendations, uh, and those recommendations by the prior from four years ago were put on the drawings in a list and incorporated in the drawings. There were minor items, but the two specific items, like for example, one of the items was we were looking to get rid of both both chimneys that one of the recommendations was, well, if we don't need the chimneys anymore, could we rebuild one of them 
the one that is westernmost on the building, could we rebuild it and make it look like it's been there for 80 years? So that's one of the conditions that we still maintain that we're okay with, as an example. Uh, some of the other examples have to do with trying to replace the windows in kind, uh, try to keep as many of the old windows as possible, and to, uh, and to maintain the siding as uh, practically feasible. So I can certainly, um, we can certainly dive into um, each of those details. There were several items. Um, I could probably call up on my computer. It's okay. The list, but, um, but the only items that we would ask for flex, more flexibility or absolvement from this board are those two recommendations. Again, our siding would match in kind to what's there just with modern materials with modern, um, just not even modern, just, you know, new uh, of the same material and windows are, would be uh, replaced to look identical to what you see both in the renderings and what you see on the technical drawings. The elevations that's on the screen right now, is that the elevation was approved in 2016? Yes, sir. And that is also uh, facing inward to the property that is not facing out to 25A. The primary entrance the primary entrance, there you go, that's facing 25A. The primary entrance is from the parking lot, which is north of the building. Any questions by the board? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. I don't really have an objection, but isn't the, the change or the, what he wants to change with the materials, isn't that the jurisdiction of the Historical Advisory Committee, not this board? If it's, I, they have to check with it. I, I would think the building department as well, but if it's similar material, I don't think they'd have a problem with it, but we could always condition it based on HDAC approval for new materials. But the, the uh, elevation that we're looking at now, I believe once you change it with these similar product, is, the elevations are not going to change and this was approved by the HDAC, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, like I said, I have no, I have no problem, you know, putting in the, the new materials and like similar materials new, but but I, I thought that that would be up for the historical advisory committee to approve or disapprove that. It, you know, I don't have- We uh, can work on the language of a condition. Yeah, I mean, it's a similar look. Nothing's gonna change the look, but as far as the, the, the existing, I believe you mentioned earlier, it was lead paint used on those shingles. Yes, sir. Okay. If we could look into that, but uh, is that the only question you have, Mr. Smith? That's it. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Dolly. Uh, on the, what are your plans for lighting? Did I miss that? Did you discuss that at all? As far as that? currently, we I didn't have any in my presentation, um, but we do have. We're we're replacing porch lights, uh, things like that. Again, you know, the streetscape from um, from twenty five A is still to maintain this residential look, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where the existing porch lights and sconces and such would be okay. replaced in kind um, and comply with, with the town lighting code. On the north side of the property, which is where people will be parking, mm -hmm. uh, they come off of Randall Road, will be parking, walking to the building, we'll be maintaining our existing lighting plan. I, I just want to point out, um, we have a parallel uh, permit approval process going through the town right now, which has to do with the balance of the site um, for site plan approval, which includes a new replacing the existing parking lot with a new parking lot, bringing in sustainable features, new lighting that complies with town code, getting rid of the very high commercial industrial lights, uh, combined with the uh, demolition of all of the non-significant, non-contributing buildings that litter the site. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any other questions by the board? No. May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move we close these, this hearing and place it on the decision calendar. <laughs> motion to close by Mr. Aludis. Mr. Chairman, this is board member Pete Zarcon. I'll second that motion. Seconded by Mr. Zarcon. Ms. Kelly? I vote aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Rose? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries seven on. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, everybody.
Mr. Chairman, before you start the next um, hearing, can I just mention that for number six, Jennifer Leeds was in the queue and I missed her. She listened, she had no problem with the, uh, the conditions and I just wanna put that on the record for you. Okay, can we incorporate that into uh, application number six for the record? Okay, thank you, Councillor. Item number eight, the Arboretum at Farmingdale is going to have to be re-advertised for a date certain, which they're going to have to pick requests. Uh, we're not going to pick a date because I'm not sure what they're doing for the adjournment, but uh, they'll have to re-advertise. So we're going to move on to item number nine, North Belmead Road. It's just 20, uh, 235 North Belmead Road in Setauket okay. and is owned L Industrial One and is 2.81 acres. The proposal is to construct a canopy, new signage, new parking area, new generator, and new curb cuts. There are six staff recommendations, last dated 9-15-2020. Staff recommends approval. Okay, is the applicant present on this council? Uh, yes, I have Mr. Manicone there. Wait till you bring him in. He's in. He's I, in. Don't, I don't see him. He's down. Uh, say something, James, and you'll pop into view. Hello, Lee. Pleasure to see you again. There he is. <laughs> Look at that. It's amazing how sound activates everything. There you go. All right. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay, Mr. Manicom, you want to speak yeah, on the sure. application? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, well, to be in my kitchen, but to be with you this afternoon. Um, I knew something smelled good. <laughs> I got a little sauce on the stove. So. <laughs> um, this is an existing building. It is a medical office. The curb cut to the north, that angled curb cut on Bellmead, that is an existing curb cut as is the curb cut off of Technology Drive. We are proposing the curb cut to the south because this is going to be a, an endocrinoscopy, an endocrinoscopy uh, surgical suite. And the reason we're requesting the curb cut to the south is because the surgical suite is gonna be on the south end of the building and the, the canopy is for the patients uh, to come in, be uh, to park under that canopy and brought in on that south side of the building. Uh, so that is the reason we are requesting approval for the canopy and for that curb cut. And then some minor parking and uh, associated with that application as well as that generator. Okay, we have highway comments on this. We, I mean, we've addressed the comments from, from planning. I don't know of any other comments that exist. Okay, you, you did receive a copy of the staff conditions, recommendations? I believe we did, yes. We have no objection to them. No objections to them. Commissioner, you, uh, was there anything from highway or something that the board should Run be up the traffic of? safety comments right now for you. Okay. They have no traffic safety concerns. They note the congestion on 347 at Bell Mead and note that the DOT is looking to reconstruct that in the future and that should mitigate the congestion. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Okay, does the board have any questions? Was there anyone else in the uh, chat room, Council? I, on? No, I have one question. Ms. Kelly? Uh, the traffic, uh, when people leave, they go out onto Technology Drive? Yeah, because the, the two, the two ingress, like they are one way only. That's what I... I yeah, they're perfect. in only. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Thank you. Other questions by the board? Okay. Yeah. May I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing, place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. 
Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair of all time, motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item number 10 is being held to, I think, November 9th, you mentioned, Ms. McCallion. Is Ms. McCallion with us? She stepped away, sir. Yes. Okay, I believe that's November being Yes. Okay. November 9th, okay. Yes. Item number 11 is a site plan with secret determination. It's Mount Sinai Meadows at Mount Sinai. Yep. So let me scroll down here. There we go. The property is located on the south side of Wisconsin Highway, State Route 25A and Myrtle Street in Mount Sinai. It's zoned PDD Plan Development District. The overall project is 28.54 acres and the first phase, phase one, which is before you today, is 21.54. Two six acres. There's 140 one and two bedroom dwelling units proposed, 5,065 square feet for a community building, a 9,000 square foot pump station, a 15,000 square foot storage building, 3,300 square feet of retail, which is existing, for a total of 173,989 GFA square feet of building area. Just getting started just turning my pages here for you there are 10 staff recommendations last dated 10 9 2020 and there is also um, a finding statement that is required under secret thank you commissioner see applicant president counselor yes they're here yes sir oh. uh, good afternoon stephen lo squadro good afternoon counselor uh, 649 Route 25A, Rocky Point, New York, on behalf of the applicant, Mount Sinai Meadows. With me is Christopher Robinson, PE, from RM Engineering, who is the engineer for the site. And I can see Chris has made it. I see him um, below on my screen. So thank you for having us. Um, very briefly, Mr. Mr. Chairman, as, as the commissioner set forth, um, this is the first phase of, of a site plan for what is a planned development district, a PDD. Uh, overall, the site is 30 acres. Uh, Ms. Riley set forth uh, the nature of the phase one of the PDD that's before you today. Uh, this does stem from um, a change of zone that was before the town board in the not too distant past. Uh, it was the product of Great collaboration and, and much back and forth with staff, with former Commissioner Bertoli, uh, with Mr. Stanzano presently, and of course with the Mount Sinai Civic Association. And the nature of what is before you reflects that collaborative effort uh, that was done in conjunction with the Civic to reflect what they wanted to see on the site consistent with what the applicant proposes. Um, with respect to um, the site itself and the build out, of course, there is, as was mentioned, uh, residential, multifamily, of course. Uh, there's office development, retail development, and a bank with a drive through, all that will proceed over time, particularly with respect to the multifamily residential development. That is going to be geared towards and marketed towards millennials. And that was done in uh, specific conjunction with the Civic Association that wanted to see that as a type of housing stock that would be made available in the Mount Sinai community, taking into account that many younger people, particularly younger professionals, uh, are leaving the community and the state uh, in their estimation, which I don't disagree with, and also that there are many opportunities for such young professionals to work in the area such as St. Charles and Mather and Brookhaven National Lab, particularly with regard to um, the planned collider that's going to be coming online shortly at BNL, uh, not to mention Stony Brook University and the medical parks there. Um, this would provide a housing stock for younger professionals and millennials so that they would have um, an affordable and meaningful opportunity to live within their community. Uh, towards that end, I am going to pass off now to Mr. Robinson because many of the, many of the amenities uh, that were crafted and then um, inserted 
into this application uh, reflect what is geared towards the millennial housing stock that's going to be on mm. the property. And in fact, as we further went back and forth with Mr. Sanzano, those amenities somewhat changed, but in the sense that they were enhanced and modified to further reflect input from staff. So at this juncture, I'm going to pass off to Mr. Robinson, who will speak to uh, amenities and features that are particular to this site, particularly those uh, that have been added since the change of zone was approved. <clears throat> And he'll also be available to answer technical questions regarding the layout and development of the site that you may have. All right, Council, before we ask Mr. Robinson to speak, have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? Yes, sir, I have, and, and the applicant does concur with them. Okay. okay, Mr. Robinson, can you please raise your right hand? Yes, sir. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Okay, Mr. Robinson, would you like to speak? Good afternoon, Chris Robinson, president of Robinson and Muller Engineers, 50 Elm Street, Huntington, New York, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, thank you, Steve, for the introduction. Uh, the site you have in front of you uh, for phase one of Mount Sinai Meadows consists of a 20 acre uh, multifamily component, which is the south half of the property, uh, and a little over one acre, which is the uh, existing music store located on the corner of Myrtle and Wisconsin. Primarily that component of the application is the existing retail building, which will remain with some minor modifications to the parking lot uh, that go with the widened, uh, the widened Myrtle Street roadway in that area. Primarily the, the multifamily component, as you can see in front of you, uh, consists of 14 buildings, 140 residential units, 28 of which are one bedroom, 112 of which are two bedroom. All of the buildings will have a full basement. Uh, the basement, the, the first floor units will have direct access for the basement for, for storage. Uh, the second floor units will have uh, uh, cellar entrances on either end of the building uh, to large storage lockers down below, which we've really identified for, you know, mountain bikes, kayak, other, you know, skis, the kind of thing that, that, that young millennials um, like to store and have with them at their apartments, but don't have a lot of room in the apartment to put it. So we chose to put in full basements with storage downstairs to handle those kind of items. Uh, since the change of zone application was done, we have added a very substantial clubhouse with a swimming pool, a community garden to the north of it. We've had a, a dog run, uh, a large open lawn area. We call it the great lawn behind the clubhouse with some preliminary perimeter low lighting around it. So it can be used for you know, pick up games or, you know, other, other uh, outdoor, outdoor rec activities. We've can uh, continue with the boulevard of aspect, boulevard style roadway coming in from uh, the Wisconsin Port Jeff Highway or Route 25A in this area with a raised median, uh, rain garden in the median, a roundabout. And then as you come south to the clubhouse area, we have angle parking and a substantial center median landscape treatment in there. So you can come down to the clubhouse, turn around. We have nice ample parking in the clubhouse area. We've also set the internal roadways up with bike lanes around the perimeter of it, walkways in and around the buildings inside that uh, overlook the, the natural drainage areas which are, 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 are well landscaped grasses and the like uh, to really provide a nice community atmosphere in the building. Uh, you can see the, the rendering there is the, is the, is the, uh, the roundabout with the center clock tower and then the, uh, the layout below. Uh, you can see we have substantial perimeter buffers all around the south side against the community to the south towards the uh, Paper Road Hollick Avenue. We have the, the buffer wraps around to the east side which borders the the County Road 111 right of way, which is a road that has not yet been built. Uh, we have naturalized retention areas in the northwest section of the area, as well as in the uh, in the center, essentially a center natural landscape courtyard uh, amongst the department units. Excuse uh, me, can I ask a question just sure. quickly? I had a question in the chat, so I just wanted to ask. Um, 
for the residents that are on Tammy Drive, it, I just can't read the map, it's very small for me. On the residents on Tammy Drive, what is the buffer there? The distance on that buffer? Certainly. Yes. I uh, just need to switch my screen so I can see the one I had open. The buffer on the south side is 130 foot. 130 foot natural buffer? 130 foot of natural. Uh, and then there's a little few more feet before you hit the curb line. So we have a little bit of clearing along to install the curb work. That 130 foot buffer wraps around. It becomes 150 on the southwest corner. I'm not sure which is Tammy Drive. And it stays 150 around the west side of the property. Okay, thank you. I think Tammy is the people on uh, the map of Crystal Brook Estates. Crystal Brook Estates would have the 150 foot buffer then behind it. Thank you. I, I have a question. Uh, the is that the only entrance by the roundabout in and out of the complex? We have an entrance. Uh, emergency entrance that'll be built in the future when we do phase two and three, which will be Vincent Street. Okay, that was my question. His concern it's a single lane in, a single lane out. I was wondering what happens on phase two and three. Yeah, phase two and three, will it'll, it'll be expanded um, over there. Okay. Does that conclude your presentation, Mr. Robinson? Yes, I, I'd also like to say that we are adding a traffic signal at Myrtle. And uh, so we'll have uh, full access to that signal in and out of the property. So we'll be able to go northbound to the, to the west. And we did note on the staff comment about bringing that center median on Myrtle, removing it further south. So it starts at the beginning of the development of the Mount Sinai Meadows property. So as not to impact the existing operation, which is the out parcel, the shopping center. We, we concur with that. Okay. Did Mr. Sanzano speak to you about the music store that you're making a request on the uh the entrance or there was a curb cut? There's a curb cut uh, for the music store onto Myrtle Street, which is being modified because Myrtle Street is a much narrower road today than it will than, uh, than it will be since it's being widened to handle the additional lanes through there. Uh, there's a little modification. I haven't gotten anything new from, from Mr. Sanzano on, on what you see in front of you. Okay. I All see right. what he's referring to is the resident or the, the property owner who asked that you move the median back so that he can get out of his shopping center? You know, yes, yeah, we're going to pull that median based on the, on mm -hmm. the comment, the staff memo is to pull that median further south, south of the music store driveway so that uh, that, that shopping center can be able to leave and, and access the traffic lane without having to go around the roundabout. Questions by the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, John Rose, I have a question for Mr. Robinson. Uh, talking about that traffic light, when you get to off of Myrtle Street onto twenty onto Nesconson Highway, I believe right now it's only a right turn only you can make. Will you be able to make a left? Is it going to be modified so that you can make a left turn out of there also, or is it going to remain right turn only? No, it'll be full access. Uh, we've already gone to the state DOT. We're removing part of that meeting and reshaping it and, and redoing the the uh, the lane arrangement and there so they'll be available to go west and to and east okay so that, well, i want to clarify that and um as far as the i believe there was two cross accesses one to the north one to the west was the one to the west gonna um cut into king collin shopping center is that right there's actually there was a requirement as part of the change of zone that we yes. do have a cross access to the west into the back of the king collin building or the old king collin building uh that would happen during the next phase when the medical office is built in phase two. Okay, okay, so that's a, that's part of the future project. And um, now you had just mentioned that a bank and retail, et cetera, is that all gonna be built on phase one or is that gonna be in the phase two or three portion? Uh, those items, the bank and the retail that, that Mr. Lusquadro talked about was at the time of the change of zone, Phase two and three would have been more of a commercial center with retail and, and a bank and the like. Uh, what our, our client right now is proposing for, for phase two and three is, uh, is more office related, medical office. So we have 
the plans that we submitted along with the, uh, the master plan for those phases show those two new buildings as medical office buildings in the future. Yes, I saw that it was pretty substantial size medical buildings. Yeah, each one's about 47,000 square feet, a two-story right. building. Phase three is 40,000 square feet is a two-story building. Okay, terrific. Thank you for your answers. I appreciate it. Do you have an estimated timeline for phase two and three? I do not at this moment, no. no. Okay. Other questions by the board? Uh, just uh, one perhaps clarification, Mr. Chairman. Where the uh, houses are in Crystal Brook Estates, along with the 150 foot natural and undisturbed buffer, it's really the corner of the property that the great lawn abuts and um, the pool area and the uh, recreation building. So they're really even further removed from actu the actual apartments themselves, if that makes a difference. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Other questions? Other questions? John, John Rose has one more question. Uh, behind the music store going down Myrtle on the left-hand side, there was there seemed to be a residential house there. Is that part of this and is, is that going to be removed or is that going to- Yeah, that, that will be removed as part of phase one. Okay. Yeah, it's in, in the picture in front of you, it's kind of the cleared area on the, on the east side of the Myrtle Avenue extension. That's where the house exists. That'll be removed as part of this phase. Terrific, thank you. It's, it's shown on the demolition plan in the set of plans that were submitted. Thank you very much. Any other questions by the board? Seeing none, may I have a motion? Oh, wait, Mr. Your, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have oh, several sorry. people chatting, me, chatting with me privately. They haven't indicated that they wanna speak in the meeting. Um, so can you just give me a moment? Marianne Smith would like to speak from the public. I'd like to let her in. Certainly. Um, and most of the questions that I have been getting have to do with the buffers adjacent to the residential property. So maybe in the meantime, can you reiterate for the public what those buffers are going to be? Okay, uh, I'll let Mr. Robinson readdress those questions, but let's bring Ms. Smith in and see what she asks. All right, she's my, my, coming in now. Ms. Smith, are you there? She's coming in right now. Hello? Yes, Ms. Smith? Yes, hello. Thank hello. you. Hello. Uh, can you, uh, I can't see you yet. I'm here. <laughs> uh, I believe you. Uh, can you please raise your right hand? Yep. Do you swear to tell the truth, swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay. All right, Ms. Smith, what is it you'd like to add? Um, I'm, I'm just concerned about the size of the buffer myself, only on the southeastern end. Um, there was no mention made of the buffer on the other end of the property, like by Hickory Street. Okay. I know it was 150 foot in the south side. So let Mr. Robinson, uh, when, uh, when you're finished Certainly asking the, your questions, all, I'll bring Mr. Robinson in. All along the north side of that, that uh, Hollick Avenue paper street is a 130 foot buffer. 130 foot of undisturbed woods, right? Undisturbed woods, yeah. And how from that buffer zone to the um, apartments, like what, you know, how far is it from the actual apartments? It is, the apartments, the nearest apartment is 175 feet from the on, on top of the 150. Uh, including the 130 foot buffer. Oh, including, okay, including that. Um, and as far as sewage, What's the deal with the sewer system? I mean, some of us on Hickory still have well water, so I'm a little you know, concerned about the influx of all this wastewater. Certainly, we, we're uh, building a pump station mm -hmm. and we'll be pumping our sewer to the Selden Sewage Treatment Plant. We have a contract or a sewer agency agreement with Suffolk County to, to accept the sewer flow uh, from here. Okay, so There'll be you. no on-site septic tank or no on-site treatment plant. Okay, great, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Uh, Council, you think that addresses the questions from some of the chat room uh, public? Um, I think that, let's see. Yes, I think we addressed those on, on the west side, right? That were on Tammy Drive. They had, again, quite, and that was 150 feet. So I think that seems to answer the questions that I'm getting. Okay, uh, uh, the board have any other questions? May I have a motion? 
Mr. Chairman, John Rose will make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Mr. Rose. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarko. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Three aye. Uh, the chair is going to abstain on this application, so it carries a six in favor, zero abstain, uh, objections, and one abstention. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Item number 12, U Hall moving and storage at East Patro. Property is located in the southwest corner of Patro Gapank Road. CR 101 and Robinson Avenue in East Patrick. Parcel is zone J business five at a lot area of 3.314 acres. It's a site plan with special use permits for U-Haul moving and storage, redevelopment of the 57,895 square foot mini storage warehouse facility with rental vehicles and accessory overnight storage of registered vehicles and moving supply retail use. There are... 11 staff recommendations, last dated 831 2020 The staff recommends approval of the site plan and the special permits for a mini storage warehouse facility and rental vehicles and waivers of special use permit criteria with the following conditions. And that's those 11 that I mentioned. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Council, can you bring the applicant in? Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Pallotta, why don't you say something and then you pop up on the screen. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I see you now, Mr. Pelota. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay, you want to talk, speak on the application? Sure, Hi, uh, Mark Pelota, Key Civil Engineering, offices at 664 Blue Point Road, Oldsville, New York. I'm here for the applicant, U-Haul. Um, basically, the application was for the renovation of an existing one-story building to mini storage. Uh, in 2017, the applicant received a rezone of the property from J2 to J5 um, and also received a uh, permission for outdoor storage. Um, we've been going back and forth with planning staff addressing their comments and I think we've come to the point where we can be before you and basically we're, we're looking for mini storage uh, and uh, also uh, two special permits uh, for the mini storage and for the motor vehicle rental and um, some uh, uh, waivers on the uh, special permit criteria. Um, I believe all the planning staff comments have been addressed and uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Well, Councilor, do we have anyone in the chat room or any? Uh, There's no one, but we did we did um, receive a letter in opposition, and their main concern had to do with the commercial truck traffic. Um, maybe you can address how. Um, uh, maybe you can address that issue. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the issue that the commercial vehicles that'll the be... neighborhood, the residential neighborhood that's to the north and um, west of this, they have some truck traffic. I guess the question is whether this site is going to generate commercial truck truck traffic for the area. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Well, in general, uh, the the self storage use is a very uh, low generating uh, traffic use. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't conduct any of those uh, ITE calculations. I can, uh, uh, but I, I typically for this type of use is very low. Probably it'll be lower than anything that was there pre previously. Um, I mean, it is a county road. We've received approval from Suffolk County DPW for our access. Um, so I think my response to that would be, uh, I wouldn't expect it to have any significant impact to, uh, to the road. Okay. okay Council, thanks. Council, was that a letter or an email you received from the? It was public? a letter. It was a letter that was received. Um, so it should be technically it's in our record, but um, okay. in case the as person's as, watching, I wanted to yeah. have the answer. Yeah, as long as it included as a public record. I have two quick questions. Uh, the elevations on the building and what is the actual purpose of the mobile units? Is that for expansion of the, the facility, or why would you want mobile units on a site like this? I, 
I believe it was just for additional square footage. Did the mobile units, what do they look like? Are they going to be similar they're, as other? Uh, they're not mobile. Um, the kind of uh, shipping container look like, I believe we submitted um, photos of it or at least a spec sheet on it. Do we have it online that we can, the board can look, look at it? There you go. So it doesn't even match with the, the elevations on the building look like. It looks like just in a, a container somewhere on the site. It is ship, shipping container like and, and can be lift up, lifted up like a sh shipping container. Um, they, they would match the U-Haul colors. The doors would be orange. The side would be white. These are going to be on the south side or the north side? The south side. So they're going to be facing 101 as you pass 101, as you go down 101, you'll be looking at those along with the building, correct? Uh, actually, they're, they're more or less perpendicular to Sills Road. So you will only be seeing the, the, the small end of them. Uh, and then they kind of face the building. You can see them there, she's pointing to them on the screen. Do you have plans, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have another question. Do you have plans at all for any landscaping along the roadway to um, buffer this a little bit? Um, yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Pilota, Mr. Pilota, before you respond, I'd like the record show that Ms. Kelly is asking the questions at this time. Okay, I'm sorry. Ms. Go ahead, Mr. Pilota. Okay, uh, yes, there, the, there's uh, quite a bit of landscaping being proposed. Currently, the asphalt goes right up to the property line and it's just a sea of asphalt. Um, the, you can see that's up on the screen now is the landscaping plan. It's pretty extensive. Um, it, it's minimum uh, offset is 15 feet up along Robinson and slightly on Sills Road. Then it goes to 25 feet. Uh, and then on the, when you come in on the left, if you're coming in on the left, there is a um, drainage reserve area, which is currently a mixture of broken up asphalt and, and weeds right now uh, that'll be planted with uh, wildflowers. Um, there's a bunch of street trees proposed, as well as we're adding uh, buffer plantings uh, wherever it was uh, sort of missing with the adjacent neighbor. Okay. I, you know, that's a concern because there used to be a lot of years ago, there used to be a lot of uh, evergreen. Uh, plantings along there, which helps soften it. And uh, there's also a U-Haul company right next door. So what happens with that? Mm. In a little shop right? right to the uh, west, there's a U-Haul rental. Are you just referring to Lowe's? No, not Lowe's, uh, right next door to you, just to the left, to the uh, west, I'm sorry. There's a little, um, the little shopping center, a little strip mall, or you want to call it, and um, they have rentals there. So I didn't know whether, you know, you were taking. Well, the rentals are, are a um, an accessory to the main uh, use, which is a mini story. Uh, so it, it, you know, it's it's vans and trucks to be rented to people right. who perhaps right. want to bring their goods there. So. No, I understand that. I was just wondering if so there'll be the building next door that rents U-Hauls and then you'll be renting the U-Haul. So uh, that was what my question was, I guess. I guess so. I'm not familiar with, with, with what you're speaking of, but um, I guess, yes, that is possible. Okay. That's all, thank you. All right. Other questions by the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. It's in regards to uh, something that's in that letter again that we received today. It makes a mention on uh, Hewlett Avenue but looking at this picture here, it doesn't believe that Hewlett's even touching that application, correct? Looks like it's further west, if that's what you're referring to. Right, yeah, because they, they make mention that there's no sidewalks. I wasn't sure if this Hewlett Avenue was a part of that application. So to me, it looks like it's not. I think we lost Mr. Mr. Robinson. No, Hewlett Avenue is, is the street, the next street east. We do not abut it. You don't. Okay. Yeah. Cause they were just talking about possibly 
there were no sidewalks. I wasn't sure if that was part of your project or even close to your project that that would be a consideration, but it doesn't look like it even touches it. So. We are redoing the sidewalks along uh, on Robinson Avenue and uh, most and, and some of them on 101, the ones that were in poor shape. Okay. Um, so we're putting new sidewalk and curb in. Thank you. All right. uh, that was Mr. Zarcone asking that question for the record. I apologize. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have one quick uh, request, Mr. Robinson. Uh, is it possible within the next 10 days or so that you can have elevations for the trailers matching the elevations on the building submitted to the board? Did you mean to say Mr. Pallotta? Uh, Mr. Pallotta, I'm sorry. That's okay. We do have a Robinson Avenue on the application, so it's a little confusing. Uh, <laughs> trying to read this is so tiny on the screen. <laughs> uh, I'm so, so the request is that we provide uh, elevations of the portable. That, yeah, units. so the, so if we sign off on this, the elevations on those portable units, or the, they consider mobile units, or uh, match the elevations on the uh, storage facility itself. I, I believe we can we can comply with that request. Okay. Are there other questions by the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Richard Smith. Just a quick question and a comment. Um, this this is the except for those new. Uh, manufactured buildings that you're bringing in, the storage buildings, this building is all existing and you're just converting it to a mini storage? Correct. Um, and I think th the comment I have is what the person in the letter who sent is saying that people that uh, come by on Sills Road or whatever, they're going down Hewlett as a cut through. And, and a lot of truck traffic is going down Hewlett is a cut, cut through, which is creating some um, traffic concerns for the person who sent that letter. And they were worried that there might be more trucks coming from this facility that would add to that truck congestion on Hewlett Avenue. I believe that was the essence of that letter that was sent. Understood. I guess I would respond to that, that Mini storage in general, its trip generation is is pretty pretty low altogether. I, I can see where someone might uh, that might be an issue if you look. Uh, I'm looking at an overall on Google Earth, and and Hewlett is a it looks like a major cut through uh, a straight shot, uh, the first straight shot off the South Service Road on Sunrise Highway that brings you down to Montauk, and basically dump dumps you out at the corner of Sills and, and Montauk Highway. So. Um, uh, I think it, it probably has uh, a lot of existing truck, truck, truck traffic because of that. Um, I, I mean, I would tend to think that GPS would bring, if someone was coming to the subject facility, it would tend to bring them down Robinson Avenue as it brings you right to the facility. Whereas on Hewlett, you'd have to go past it and sort of come back north on it. All right. Any other questions by the board? I have a question, Mr. Chairman, Steve Walutis. I have a question regarding the mobile units or shipping containers. What is the purpose of these units? It was additional square footage. Why, is there any reason why they can't be permanent structures as opposed to mobile units? I don't understand. Strictly cost. And are these structures going to be moved around or are they going to stay in one fixed location? They're, they're meant to stay in one location. They actually get bolted to the ground. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, they're prefabricated buildings, Mr. Walutis. And um, if they're going to stay for more than 180 days, they're going to end up having permanent foundations or settings. They'll have to be they'll have to go through the building department and they'll have to demonstrate how they can be made permanent. Thank you. Other questions by the board? May I have a motion? So Mr. Chairman, you wanna keep this hearing open for written comment for those can, um, elevations? Yeah, exactly, yeah, I wanna make it a condition for, you know, leave it so the board can review and make sure that those uh, mobile units match the elevations on the building itself. 
So right now I need a motion. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion um, to close this public hearing, but allow 10 days for written uh, comment by the public and also for the applicant to provide elevation to the planning department um, so that we can see, uh, you know, give you some more detail um, on, so we can render a decision. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. Kelly. Yeah, Mrs. Board Member Pete Zarcon, I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcon. Mr. Baloudis. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Uh, item number 13, uh, August at Yapank. Property is located on the east side of Sills Road, 707 feet west of County Road 101 in Yapank, zoned L Industrial 1, and is a lot area of 7.026 acres. No building is proposed. It's the construction of a storage yard for a landscape contractor with two special permits, one for outdoor storage and one for overnight parking of vehicles. There are nine staff recommendations last dated 921 2020. Thank you, Commissioner. Is the applicant with us, Councilor? Yes, I have Chris Debate. I'll bring Mr. Levate in. He's there. Mr. LeBate, can you hear us? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Can you raise your right hand, please. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Okay, Mr. LeBate, you want to go over the application with the board and the public? Sure. My name is Christopher LeBate of the firm Lab Crew Engineering, located at 273 Hawkins Avenue in Ronkonkoma. Uh, we're here tonight for this application for a storage area for industrial uses as permitted by the planning board. This site is approximately a little over seven acres located just south of the LIE off County Road 101, also known as Sills Road. This site and all the surrounding parcels, except for the Long Island Railroad to the south are zoned L1 industrial. There is no intention for any buildings on this site, except maybe future office trailers by uh, tenants which will rent the space, uh, which I believe will require a permit by this board. We're asking for no variances, just standard permits for a site of this use, outdoor storage and overnight parking of registered vehicles. This project is perfect in this location for correct zoning and use. This will clean up the existing site and illegal dumping that has been happening on this property. The property has been thoroughly reviewed by all departments, including a DEC submission, which gave us a letter of non-jurisdiction. But one of the conditions was a clearing of the property at certain times of the year, as noted in your staff recommendations. I have read and agreed to all the staff, well, me and the client have read and agreed to all the staff recommendations and be happy to answer any questions at this time. I just want to note that there is a change in the staff recommendation number four, those dates you referenced. The DEC recently changed the dates. So it should be December 1st okay. to February 28th of each year. They cut a month off each end. All right. Am I going to receive a new set of staff recommendations after this? If the board approves it, it would be indicated in the approval letter. Okay. Council, do we have someone to speak on the application? Do I have someone here to speak? Just a moment. They're coming in right now. Is it there yet? Um, they're in, but, um, hello. Okay. Yes. Hello. It's Alicia Menachino. Yes. Ms. Menachie, uh, can you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes, I do. Okay. What is it you'd like to talk? So I'm the attorney for the landowners of this, these parcels, Salvatore and Francis, Francisco Norberto. I apologize. I didn't realize you were a counselor. That's all right. I let you swear me in anyway. Uh, I, I have I see a couple familiar faces on the board, but I don't ever get the pleasure of, of appearing before you. Um, I did send some correspondence via the online matrix that's available. 
Um, and I gave you a brief description of what's going on here. My, the applicant is a contract vendee on this property uh, from a contract that was executed in, in early October, 2018. And we initially gave them permission to make an application for a building permit. Um, subsequent to the um, entry into, the, into that contract, my, con my client decided to de declare it in default because of issues we were having with the, how the process was going with the application process because the closing was contingent upon the building permit being granted, a building permit being granted. So we are actually in litigation right now in the Supreme Court on this. I represent my client, Francisco Norberto, in that action. And he went by the property and saw that there was a sign up for the public notice. He asked me to please get involved and express that he opposes this application. We no longer want this, these, these uh, applicants to make any movements on this property and um, at a minimum to hold the application in abeyance, but uh, really for it to be denied because this, this, these landowners don't, don't, they oppose this. They, they don't, they're not authorizing this action. Did you initially grant owner's consent? We initially did, Beth, yes. And you're, and you're withdrawing that consent? That's correct. Okay, so there is current litigation on this parcel? That's correct. I can give you the index number if you're looking for it. Uh, is the applicant aware of this? Mr. Labate may have some tangential knowledge of it as, as the, as the um, expediter. Uh, but the action itself was commenced by the applicant BNB Homes. They they sued for specific performance. Hey, counsel, I'm going to defer to our counsel uh, on this matter. Um, well, generally speaking, this is a dispute between uh, two private parties. Um, the owner, can, the owner's consent came in with the application. Um, we can probably hold this off to get some more detail, I think. I mean, we have time to make, the board has time to make a decision and maybe get some more detail um, into the lawsuit. I don't think that the owner, I don't think that, that the town is actually in possession of an owner consent, but as a practical matter, it was consented to, you know, well, just by a part and parcel of the, of right. the contract of sale. Well, that I guess is the question because generally what we ask for as part of the application is an owner's consent form that's signed by the actual owner if it's not the applicant. So if you're saying that that did not occur, that's a different story. So um, I don't we think would have did. to go back. I'd like to go back then and review the application and see if that is there. Understood. If that's in the file. Mm -hmm. I, I think at this point, the best thing is to hold this open to an open date, not the next meeting, but perhaps further down the road to give sufficient time to find out what the, you know, what's okay. happening. Is that okay with you, Counselor? Thank you, Mr. Counselor. Counselor Reid. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Counselor. That's fine with Counselor Reid as well. There's too many counselors. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hold this to a, an open date when we get to that. All right, so let's. Uh, Ms. McCallion, are you available? Yes. What is the next meeting after the November 9th meeting? Um, 23rd. 23rd? 23rd. Okay, so let me have a motion to hold this to a date certain of November 23rd, and then we'll see what happens, and we can always make a determination what we're going to move forward or what are we doing with this application at that time. I can have a motion on this. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an, um, a motion to hold this application uh, to the November 23rd meeting of the Planning Board. Okay, so we have a date certain of November 23rd, motion made by Ms. Kelly, and I have a second. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Board Member Pete Zarcon, I'll second that motion. Seconded by Mr. Zarcon, Mr. Aludis. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Rose? Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries seven out. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'd like to go back to item number one. Quorum. Mr. Yes. No, go ahead, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, item number one, quorum omega, lot 2070 quorum. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the applicant's request for an increase in clearing limits from 70%. 85% in conjunction with all staff recommendations, numbering one through four, last reviewed on August 27, 2020, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Rose. 
Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarpone. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Ms. I Dunn. vote aye. Ms. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Item number two Old Stump Road, Land Division, Plot B at Brookhaven. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I make a motion to approve this application subject to staff recommendations number one through five as covenants and conditions uh, dated, I'm sorry, 9-8-20 as covenants and conditions of the approval. This also has a denial of 48% with an approval of 46%. Okay. Yes. All right, Ms. Kelly. All right, motion by Ms. Kelly. The chair, this is board member Pete Zarcone. I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcone. Mr. Walutis? Yes, aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Rose? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item 3, Port Woods, lot 18 at Port Jeff Station. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to deny a clearing limit increase from 46% to 97%, but to approve a clearing limit increase from 46 to 58%. Like to approve um, that clearing limit with staff recommendations um, and comments uh, numbered one through eight, uh, last dated October 19th, 2020. Okay, motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcone. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 7 0. <laughs> Item 4, Lorraine Woods, lot number 6 at Medford. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion um, to approve this application subject to staff recommendations number 1 through 5, dated 9 10 20, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Ms. Kelly. Chairman, board member Pete. It's a, you're, the staff recommendation is for a denial of 59 and approval of 58. That's what your motion is for? I'm sorry, yes, yes. Okay, amended motion by Ms. Kelly, seconded by Mr. Zarcone. Yes, I second that motion. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye. 7 0, motion carries, so moved. Item number five, Pine Woods at Quorum, lot 142 at Quorum. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the applicant's request for an increase in clearing limits from 58% to 70% in conjunction with all staff recommendations, numbering one through six, last reviewed by staff on September 10, 2020, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Rose. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarpone. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7-0. Item number six, Wading River Estates, lot number 47. Chairman, this is Stephen Walutis. This is an application to increase the clearing limits from 52% to 85%. I have a motion to deny that aspect of the application to increase from 52 to 85% but to approve the application uh, to, in, to increase the clearing limits to 70%, subject to staff recommendations one through five, dated September 25th, 2020, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Walutis. Chairman, board member Pete Zarcone, I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcone, Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item number seven, miscellaneous matter, Tesla Science Center, Visitor Center, Shore. Mr. Chairman, I would ask to keep on the decision calendar so that uh, conditions establishing uh, concerning the siding and windows can be uh, put in place. Okay. Item number seven will stay on the decision calendar. Item number eight is being held for an indefinite date. Pending the applicant's request for re advertising. Item number nine, 235 North Belmine Road. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve 
um, the site plan for the construction of a canopy, new signage, new parking uh, area, new generator and new curb cuts with um, staff recommendations uh, numbered one through six, uh, last um, dated 9-15-2020 as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Malutis. Aye. Uh, Ms. Dunn. She made the motion. Uh, second. Okay, second. Uh, Marking is down. Mr. Rose. Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Uh, Tyler Avenue Road and Coon is being held, I believe, on November 9th. Item number 11, Mount Sinai Meadows at Mount Sinai. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, first I'd like to make a motion to adopt the sequel finding statement received by the Planning Department on October 15, 2020 as part of the record. And then I would like to make a further motion uh, to adopt a negative declaration for this point. You don't need a neg deck, you're doing the finding statement? Gotcha. All right, so let's have a motion for the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the phase one site plan for the site improvements of a planned development district phase plan, which includes the development of 140 dwelling unit multifamily residential development, along with community building, clubhouse, public spaces, roadway improvements, and improvements to existing retail facility. Um, this development will be at the corner of Wisconsin Highway and Myrtle Street in Mount Sinai. Future phases include office development, retail development, and a bank with a drive through as well as a uh, medical office space. Plans are consistent with the adopted PDD master plan. This apl application is being approved in conjunction with all staff recommendations numbering 1 through 10, a last revise on October 16, 2020, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Okay, Mr. Rose, before we accept that motion, I need a motion to accept the findings. I make a motion to adopt the findings of the CEQA uh, statement we see by the planning department on 10 15 2020 as part of the record. Okay, motion by Mr. Rose to adopt the finding statement. You have a second, please. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Aludis. Aye. It's done. Aye. Uh, Chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Now, you made your motion earlier. That should be part of the record. Could I have a second on Mr. Rose's initial motion? Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcon? I vote aye. Ms. Kelly? I vote aye. Mr. Aludis? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. The chair is abstaining on this application. So six zero and one abstention being in the chairman. Uh, item number 12. You Mr. Chairman, can I, ask, can I ask you a question, please? Yes. On the statement finding, was the same motion 601? Yes. Okay. You who are moving the storage, they were leaving this for written uh, elevations. We can move on this, though, right, Councilor? No, you have the, you left the record you open. You want to leave it open? Okay, so then we have- For the 10 the... days, so at the next meeting, okay. if you want to move. Uh, item number- 13. 13, Yapang. August at Yapang. We're holding that to 11-23. Right, okay. And then we have on the decision calendar, Lowe's at Stony Brook. Yes, I have the, the findings and conclusions, so you can make a decision. Okay, does Mr. Smith have those findings? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can you make a motion on those findings? Uh, make a motion to deny this application as per the board findings dated 10-19-2020. Uh, okay, a motion by Mr. Smith for denial of the application. Can I have a second? Yes, this is Karen Dunn. I will second that motion. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcon? I vote aye. Ms. Kelly? I vote aye. Mr. Aludis? Aye. Mr. Rose? Aye. The chair votes aye. We also need a motion to deny, I guess, the site plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make a motion to deny the site plan, also as per the board findings dated 10-19-2020. Uh, motion by Mr. Rose, uh, Mr. Smith. 
I'll second that motion. Board member Pete Zarcon. Second by Mr. Zarcon. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, is there anything the board would like to discuss before we adjourn this meeting? Councilors, anything you'd like to add? Good. Commissioner? Okay, I okay, have a motion to adjourn. The chairman, this is board member Pete Zarcone. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Zarcone. I second that motion, Patricia Kelly. Second by Ms. Kelly, Mr. Baludis. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Ms. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Chair outside meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.